Coming up, we make noise, then we play with toys, then we play with bigger toys, and then finally we make more noise. Well, where to get going in a really rough body like this is almost the hardest part. Everywhere you look on this car, it needs a ton of work. So I've got to break it down into smaller pieces. And what I want to do is tackle the macro first, which is the shape top to bottom, side to side. Let's pick between where they factory welded the body is here and here. We'll take this section and we'll get it shaped so that all my curves are correct. Then after I've done that, I'll make this piece and I'll weld it into place. I wouldn't want to weld this in place first because if my shape isn't exactly right, I may make a whole bunch more work for myself than I really needed to do. So we'll start hammering out all of this, cross here, cross here, then I'll come outside of where they welded it, because they messed that metal up, I'll come outside here into some good virgin metal, we'll make our new piece, and then I can hammer weld it in there. With the nicety of having it on this lift, I can raise it up and down and I can be comfortable as I'm hammer welding this in. I can lower it down and I can be comfortable hammer welding what I'm going to go across the top here. So without further ado, let's get this back panel done then we'll move on to the sides. Well what I'm doing here is I'm spooning it first and I made this tool from a Model A spring believe it or not. Back in the 1930s when these cars were manufactured, they were built with 19 gauge metal, mostly deep draw and extra deep draw which makes it very formable. Unfortunately we can't buy that 19 gauge and deep draw and extra deep draw anymore but we can buy 19 gauge. It's available on the east coast of the United States. So I always go back and buy a load at a time and the reason why I make the special effort to use 19 gauge is it works easier than the 18 gauge you can buy at the local supplier and also because it's the exact same thickness I can heliarc that and planish those welds out and they virtually disappear. Well you can see what about 45 minutes of basic roughing will do. This panel has really kind of come into where it's supposed to be. The only problem I was having is because of all these pieces down here were so deformed, I cut those out and that allowed me to get this section in here that was severely deformed back in order. You can see where the, the rust c kind of came in here like this because they knocked it out and it was hot from them welding it. They just terrible work. Seems like I spend most of my time undoing things that people did before. Uh, so we cut that out and this came in really nice. So I just had a little bit of metal here to make sure that I had my basic shape right. I didn't want to cut clear up to where I actually want to go, which is somewhere in this neck of the woods right here. I'm going to go ahead and work this completely for two reasons. One is I can get to it while well, I still have this big hole here. I can also get to it from the bottom. I can get to it from the top. It's just a lot easier. And two is I can get my planishing hammer in. So it will be really easy for me to work this now. Then I'll come in here. We'll cut this out bigger and we'll go make our panel and weld it in there. And then we can move on to the sides. Well, it sure is nice to have a lot of tools in your toolbox. And one of my favorites is this portable planishing hammer. It is wonderful. The only downside to this thing is, is if you uh, kind of overwork it, you've stretched it too much, and now you've got to come back and shrink it. So I'm doing a little off dolly dollying here, which is the dollies right next to the hammer, kind of shrinking it that way. But I need a little bit more. So instead of going to the shrinking disc, I use the torch on it, and I just get the metal warm so it's coming up at me. I don't want to see any blue spots or red spots. I just want to get just enough in there to uh, move that metal up and then shrink it down with some off dolly hammer and dolly work and it worked out real well in this case.
Time to lay out some square lines and make our final cut for our panel. We'll get out here into some nice virgin metal that hadn't been welded on or messed with. So I came in here with my uh, pneumatic tool with the uh, saw on the end of it. And I guess we could use a plasma cutter too, but it just puts too much heat in it. And I need to keep it as cool as possible to keep the warpage down. So this tool worked out beautiful. Cut it out, clean it up a little bit, then off to make the panel. Right, now after about six or eight hours of pounding on this thing, I've got the basic shape of this whole tub section together. I decided since I went ahead and had this panel out, I could get in here and I went clear around the side, each side, the passenger side was really beat up badly. Um, but the challenge on this driver's side was this belt molding was pushed in and rolled and pushed in toward the center of the car made a heck of a, a challenge to push this thing back out because you have no place to swing a hammer in here. You're up against this panel. Well, I was faced with two choices. One was I could cut this out, get in there and hammer that out. Then I would have had to do a bunch more hammer welding in here. And I really don't want to do that. Second choice was to go over to the wood shop and make a specialty tool. This piece here is a piece of oak that I shaped the end so that it fit this belt molding just right. And then I got out the BFH, the two pounder. And I just pounded the hell out of that thing until I got all the basic shape that I wanted to back in the body. The problem is I can't really metal finish that off. I'm really close, but this is a perfect place to use lead. Since I have to get the lead out and re-lead over where they lead it at the factory, well, I might as well just go around the corner and come up here and lead that. It's really pretty easy. Let me show you. Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to tin the metal, and there's a special tinning compound to do that. Remember, we talked about the Star Blast, and it is so nice that uh, you don't have to do any more cleaning. Sometimes you got to run over a Scotch Brite wheel if you have to, but that's really all there is to it. And then get all that uh, acid as part of the tinning compound back off of there. Once that's done, it's just a matter of adding lead to the lead that's already there from the tinning process. So you just try to keep the metal and the lead about the same temperature and I just kind of go along and stick it on there, paddle it out, stick it on there, paddle it out, kind of make uh, some kind of a mental note of what is high and low and so you go back and add some in the lows and push some out of the highs to the lows. If you can keep that temperature just about the same on the lead and the metal, there's nothing to this. It's really easy and if you're a good paddler, Maybe you're a good cake baker and you do a heck of a job icing a cake. That's really what this is. Uh, you do great paddle work. It makes the filing just nothing. And that's really where the work is and all. This is all that filing of the lead. So do the great paddle work. It makes a snap out of the filing. Well, there you have it, about 30 minutes worth of work. No big deal, about one stick of lead from here clear around to here. We took care of the factory uh, seam here and we used our file all the way through. If you've caught any of my earlier episodes on leading, I really don't like to use sandpaper. The little bits of sandpaper come off, get buried in the lead, potentially cause paint problems later on. So I finished all this outside off with a flat file, finished this off with the bull nose file on the inside curve here. We do have to bolt up our rear fender and make sure that I've got all this right. But looking at the car now from all angles, I've got nice shape, even shape, both sides of the car. This is nice and square and parallel just like it is all the way down. And it really didn't take that much to do it. I highly encourage you to, to try lead work. It's not that difficult. And if you, uh, if you get good at putting it on and paddling it around, file work is a minimum. And bang, there you are. Looks beautiful too. This is a Polmax P9. Way overkill for what I do here, but it's a machine I found and it's working well. I made this little jig set up and I make dies to fit in these jigs and then I don't have to weld dies to all the stands and this is a it's a uh, machine made in Sweden so it's all metric stuff and so this setup works really good the first thing I needed to do is just make a little test panel I needed to make sure the dies were tuned right and they were making the right bead it looks pretty damn good so off to making the actual piece. Remember I say 19 gauge is really coveted around here so I don't want to waste anything. I always make a test piece first. 
So then I take the actual piece of metal that I'm going to use, the 19 gauge, I use the guide or the fence there on the right, and because I don't have much of a, a lead in in these, I take uh, little steps and I just keep tightening it up and I keep doing it further and further and further, and it usually takes about three or four passes. And on a real uh, shallow die like this one, I think three passes did it. Well, I still have to bend the right angle at the bottom of the panel, so we just use a box and pan brake for that. The only trick here is, is don't go too far. It's a lot easier to creep up on it on your bend angle than it is to go too far and then have to take some out. So three or four trips between the car, and remember, I like to keep the car as close to the equipment as I can. It's only about three steps over there. So back and forth, back and forth a little bit. Make sure I've got the bottom lip just right. But we're not quite done yet. We still gotta put some shape into this thing. Well, now that I've got all the body tub section in the back all shaped, I can close up the hole. So it's time to get back after this. I already shaped this curve this way to fit the curve of the back of the body on the kick shrinker by shrinking this lip right here. So as I bring this lip in, it gives it more and more curve this way. That's fine for down here, but I still don't have any shape in here. I put a little form in it by just kind of rolling this over a table. And that is the curve of the body going up the body. But we've got to put some compound curve in this, which means we need to stretch this middle section just a little bit. And we could do that on the power hammer, and we could do that on the English wheel. We could do it with a claw hammer and a rock. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this power hammer with a real uh, shallow radius die and we'll just put a little bit of shape into it. We may go over to the English wheel, wheel a little bit too, but let's start off with this guy, the power hammer. Well, I put this panel in here and fitted it by putting a couple Clecos in here and locating it. And what I was really, really concerned about was this line down here and down here. This belt molding has to line up absolutely perfect. So that's where I started. I had to trim the bottom side to get it down underneath there and get this at the right height. Now I've got the, the right radius here. This little part here is going to get trimmed off. I went inside and I marked it where I wanted to trim this panel, but if I just let it go and let it fly, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a hard time holding it in place. And they make all kinds of little things to hold on to it and whatnot. I don't know. I never spent the money. I don't have the money anyways. Um, so I just take a piece of scrap metal, uh, sheet metal, and I go ahead and line it like this. Then what I'll do is I'll go cut this thing out put it in here and I will Clico this all in place. 
so that these strips of metal will be holding this into place. Now I can go ahead and drill holes right here and hold that and then I can cut it later or I could cut it first and then do the other later. I'll just go ahead and drill these right now and then put this in. So once I do that, then I can trim this out. This panel will free float inside the opening at that point and these Clecos with these that will now be on the back side will hold it in place. That way I can go in here and start heliarching it, tacking it all in place. Once I've got it to the point where I've got everything leveled up and it's going to stay where I want it to stay, then I can remove these panels. We'll go ahead and finish up all the heliarching and we'll hammer weld it together. Well, after a lot of back and forth of trimming the panel to fit in the opening just right, because when we heliarch, we've got to have a zero gap situation. And if we have a zero gap situation, we can get that metal to flow together with minimal filler rod. And then the metal finishing portion, the hammer and dolly of the welding, goes much better. In the old torch days, that's what we would do. It had just a minimal filler, and we would uh, hammer weld uh, the whole panel. We would weld about three quarters of an inch, hammer weld it, three quarters of an inch, hammer weld it. Well, in the TIG days now, it's the same thing, but if we put minimal filler in there, we really can get these welds to disappear much easier than even in the torch days. And obviously down here at the bottom, I didn't have to hammer weld it because you're right on a, on a beaded edge. So after I've got it all hammer welded in there, you got to planish it out still. So I have a different arm attachment here to the planishing hammer. And I put that on there and I kind of go around and I'm just sort of smoothing that out. You know, metal is formed along slip plates and you're just trying to smooth that metal out along those plates. Well, even after you do that, remember the planishing hammer is just going to stretch it. Sometimes you have to come back and just do a little bit of shrinking. So we'll do cold shrinking off dolly technique, my dolly is next to my hammer and I'm just sort of pushing that metal down and slipping those slip plates together so the metal is getting slightly thicker and it's shrinking back down. Now I've attached the uh, other arm to the planishing hammer. It seems to be working a little bit better here on top because it's not quite as long and so uh, it doesn't bounce quite as much. And I think it works a little bit better. I can just slide back and forth along that weld. And the idea is, is get it to completely disappear. Sometimes I'll take my uh, big grinding wheel with a completely dull disc. I mean, it doesn't cut anything. I just want to shine the metal if I'm in a big hurry. The best way to do this is with a file, but this is a big area to take care of. It would have taken me forever. So the, the dull disc will shine that up. Then I can take this pick hammer and I can just do the final finish and I can bring up the little bit low spots and it works really neat and then we'll uh, file it on those high spots down and then after we get the fenders on and the bottom skirt all worked out it's looking really good the, the thing is going to metal finish out really nice the fender fit is absolutely beautiful and I think it's going to look really very very nice Coming up in next week's episode, we got more body work to do. We've got the doors, the cowl, the firewall, the gas tank, windshield and windshield frame, and remember that nasty panel above the driver's door? We've got a lot of work to do.